Hey guys, this is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and we're jumping right in here to part two of our series, Gold Panning versus Assay. And I'll put a link to part one up here in the upper right hand corner for you if you want to start at part one. Um, but right now we're taking our second sample, the one that we did not pan, and we're uh, roasting it over our furnace, trying to convert all the sulfides into oxides so that they'll be uh, dissolved in our slag that we're going to make um, with our flux, which we'll walk through here in a minute. The sulfides need to reach a temperature of a little over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I kind of shoot for between 1,000 and 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're a little bit cool here still, but uh, we'll get it up to temperature and make sure it gets all thoroughly mixed and oxidized. So I got to thinking about it afterwards, and uh, it would be really easy to take our panning tailings and smelt these down and see if we can recover any gold out of them. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll get these, uh, I'll get these panning tailings um, dried out, roast them, and then we'll smelt these, and then we can have uh, a button from our panning cons and then a button from the panning tailings, and we can compare those with the smelt of the original ore. And then we can um, have a comparison all three. So that'll be cool. Um, so let me get these roasted and uh, ready to smelt. So most of this you're seeing is the water being driven off from the panning tailings. Uh, but it's really important to wear a respirator when you're doing this because a lot of SO2 is driven off, which if you breathe it in, it mixes with the water in your lungs and turns into sulfuric acid in your lungs. So that's something you really want to avoid. So here's the flux we're going to be using. This is Chapman's flux, and it's mostly uh, borax, soda ash, and silica with a little bit of manganese dioxide as an oxidizer. And I've mixed up about two kilograms of Chapman's flux for the one kilogram of roasted ore that we have. And I'm going to smelt them here in this number 12 crucible. Okay, here's our stuff we're getting ready to smelt. Um, I left quite a bit of room in the crucible for expansion and, and uh, some boiling. Uh, I got a little more here I'm going to have to add to the to the crucible after it gets molten and, and liquid. Um, and somebody asked me about that the other day, and I kind of said, well, now you don't want to do it, but here I'm going to try it. So um, we'll get this in the furnace and get it going. And then over here we have our uh, panning tailings that have all been roasted now, and uh, we'll get those um, smelted after this. I'm going to add to this, or in the bottom of this, there's about uh, 300 grams of lead. Um, and so that'll act as our collector metal. As the material gets up to temperature, uh, it releases a bunch of gas. In this particular smelt, there's probably a lot of oxygen coming off the manganese dioxide. Uh, but it bubbles and boils, and as it heats up, it expands. And here's a shot showing that uh, as I zoom in, you can see the, the material has expanded, and it's about an inch or maybe a little bit less from the lip of the crucible. So you want to make sure you leave some room in there uh, for expansion so it doesn't boil over and get all over your furnace. And then here's a quick shot showing um, after it's the first initial charge all became molten, the volume reduced quite a bit. So then I could add in uh, the little bit of material I had left over. And so we smelted the full amount. Okay, so here I'm trying to show you that uh, we didn't have any matte layer, so it's just slag, glassy slag, and uh, our nice lead, lead button here. So we'll take this and we'll cupel it and recover the precious metals.
Okay, so the first test I used um, Chapman's Flux, and Chapman's Flux has an oxidizer in it. Uh, and the second one, I wasn't real happy with it because it was it was seemed really thick. Um, there was a lot more quartz in this one, and so uh, for the second one, I used straight borax, and I ran into a little bit of a problem. I've got a I've got a matte layer here. And that's that artificial sulfide. It's not artificial. It's just all the sulfides, they're not soluble in the slag, uh, and they're not soluble in the metal. So they make a third phase is what it's called. And it sits between the metal and the slag. Um, and so when I use the straight borax, you can see kind of like sits like that. When I use the straight borax, uh, the little bit of sulfides that were in there that didn't get roasted end up uh, on the on top of the, the metal. So we got to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to roast this again, crush it up, roast it. I'm going to use the same collector metal, put it back in and, uh, and re-smelt it and hopefully get rid of all this mat, all the sulfides will, uh, roast off. And then we can, uh, then we can get all of our, all of our metal, uh, all of our precious metal in with the lead because whenever you have a matte layer, you're going to lose some precious metals, uh, primarily silver, but there's also gold that gets um, caught in there as well. So you really want to get rid of your matte layer. Here's the three cupels we're going to do and oxidize our lead. This is the material that we didn't pan. Uh, so that should have um, all the gold in it from that sample, that first uh, one kg. This is the panning tailings, and I've got it all smelted down again, uh, used up the mat, so we've got all of our gold in here, if there is any. And then this is um, a sample of the lead I use, and I'm just going to cupel this and see if there's any precious metals in the lead that I'm using, just as kind of a check. And so if, there's, if there ends up being uh, a small amount of precious metals, most likely silver, uh, we'll have to remove that from our final weight. Uh, at the end, but I'm just going to do a check here to see if our lead we're using has any precious metals. We have our cupels loaded in this gas furnace, and the goal is to heat the lead up, melt the lead, and then have enough oxygen in the furnace to oxidize the molten lead, get the temperature up high enough, about 1700 degrees, so the lead oxide melts, and then it's absorbed into the cupels. And as that process continues, the lead gets totally sucked up into the cupel as lead oxide, leaving our precious metals button. But it's a little bit hard to do in a gas-fired furnace. It's hard to control the temperature um, and the oxygen flow. So I've got to find a little bit better way to uh, run my cupels and oxidize my lead. And here's our cupels after the lead has been fully oxidized. And you can see our little tiny beads in there. Uh, but I have another problem. Uh, the cupels are actually now stuck to the bottom of the furnace because there was a little bit of slag left in there. So now I have to chip my cupels out of the furnace. Here's our three beads. And uh, this one was the original one that we smelted from the panning uh, concentrates. And this one is 0.1 grams. This one over here is the bead from the one kilogram we smelted that we didn't concentrate at all. And this one weighs 0.16 grams. And this is the little bead from the panning tailings. And it weighs 0.8 grams. So we recovered almost as much gold as we did from the original panning here. So these two together weigh uh, 1.8 grams. And this one uh, is 1.6, I think I just said. So um, we recovered roughly about the same amount of gold. But uh, in this particular ore, it really makes sense to uh, save the concentrates, the black sand, the sulfides, because there's a significant amount of gold left in the sulfides. And here is our little teeny tiny bead of probably silver that was cupelled from our straight lead. And it's so small I can't even weigh it on my scale. But there is a little bit of silver in our in our lead. So um, I gotta figure out how much that is and then I gotta subtract that from the weight of our uh, of our buttons. But um, that's from 160 grams of roofing lead. So 
So I have our, our three gold beads in that little cupel. Um, I'm gonna reuse it actually. I've already used it once, but I think there's enough uh, capacity there. I'm gonna cupel another 10 grams of lead and I get all those buttons in uh, coalesced into one button. Um, but I've, I'm using a little electric furnace here and it'll help me control the temperature. I can actually set the temperature. It's, uh, it's working its way up, it's heating up now. Um, but I can set the temperature so uh, I don't get it too hot and I have a lot more control and then I can just crack this door um, to allow the oxygen in and oxidize the lead when, when uh, we're up to temperature. So I'm going to, uh, you can see it, the frame rates making the numbers look all goofy, but um, I'll show you how this works when we get up to temperature and then uh, we'll take a look at our all of our gold coalesced into a single bead here after it's all done heating up. We're just about up to temperature now and the cupel and the lead are lagging behind a little bit. But it's black, it's all oxidized, and as soon as it gets up to about 1650, 1700, it'll start melting and, uh, and driving off into the cupel. And right now we're at uh, 1550 or so. All right, we're up to temperature now. Let's see if we can take a peek in there. There's our lead. And well, the temperature just dropped quite a bit because I opened the door, but we're at about uh, 1750 or so is uh, the temperature of the furnace. And all these fumes you see coming off the cupel uh, are lead oxide. So you really want to be aware of that and wear a respirator and do it in a very well ventilated area if you're going to be cupelling lead um, and oxidizing lead. And there's our bead all coalesced into one. So we'll get it out of there and check it out. And when you do the math on that, we ran two kilograms of material, ended up with 0.31 grams. And so you multiply 0.31 by 500 and you end up with a little over 150 grams a ton. So that stuff is definitely got some gold in it. Um, and so uh, I'm going to have to go back and, like I said at the beginning, I, I definitely handpicked some stuff uh, that looked good, but I'm going to have to go back and get a bulk sample and run some of that and, and see, uh, see how much gold's in the dump pile. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.